Stangibilisco here. Uh, a reader has uh, expressed interest in my explaining the functions of each individual component in uh, all of the circuits, or some of the circuits anyway, in chapter 26 of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, sixth edition, published in June of 2016 by McGraw-Hill. Uh, I thought, well, okay, I'm, I did some in chapter 26, and uh, it's logical to suppose that this uh, reader and viewer of my channel will uh, proceed on to chapter 27, after chapter 26, and, uh, and there are some circuits in that chapter that I would like to break down for you as well, and we'll start with figure 27-2. This is the sixth edition, remember, of the paper-bound book. You'll find it on page 462. And what it is, what this circuit does, basically, is change a plain old radio frequency carrier into an amplitude-modulated signal, or AM, signal. And it does that quite easily. Uh, it simply varies the gain of an amplifier at a rate determined by the variations in the audio input. For example, whatever yammering you might utter, similar to the yammering that I'm uttering right this minute into this microphone. So let's start with the radio frequency carrier input. It might be something like 10 megahertz. This blocking capacitor keeps the uh, input circuit, whatever it might be, from affecting the bias on the base of this NPN bipolar transistor. And it just so happens to be an NPN bipolar transistor. It could be PNP, uh, in which case you would reverse the polarity of the power supply. Or it could be a field effect transistor, in which case you'd get rid of this resistor right here between the uh, control electrode, in this case the base, and the power supply. Uh, but this example uses an NPN bi bipolar transistor, the emitter, the base, and the collector. And it's simply a class A amplifier circuit. Blocking capacitor, as I said, keeps the input circuit from affecting the bias on the base which is determined by a voltage divider com um, composed of these two resistors and it's such that uh, signal flows for the entire radio frequency input cycle it amplifies the signal somewhat uh, you have your same positive power supply uh, terminal here is here. These could just as well be considered to be connected together. Another blocking capacitor to keep whatever is at the output from shorting out or otherwise affecting the uh, collector bias or output signal. So this part of the circuit, excluding the transformer down below, is nothing more than a class A amplifier. Now what about this stuff? Well, this is an audio transformer, powdered iron core in this case, as you can see. It's uh, probably a toroidal uh, these days uh, transformer, although it could conceivably also be a pot core, or it could conceivably be a conventional audio frequency transformer design. Um, but a toroidal transformer is... Uh, is the transformer of choice. Well, I think I'd choose a pot core in this case because it would offer more inductance. You get the turns ratio just right uh, by experimentation, and it's really nothing more than a, something that varies the amount of signal or the amount of the voltage that the emitter gets. So the amplifier, in effect, gets more voltage and then less, more voltage and then less in a waveform pattern that mimics whatever the waveform of the audio input signal is. And as long as the audio input signal isn't too strong, 
so as to cause distortion in the audio frequency or in the radio frequency amplification that is so long as the gain remains constant in this amplifier at every point in the audio input cycle you'll get a nice clean amplitude modulated signal at the output simple amplitude modulator circuit um, this resistor of course is necessary uh, to prevent the tra the uh, transistor from burning out if you if you directly connected it to the power supply you'd get too much current and burn the the transistor and did i say resistor <laughs> well uh transitory resistor okay uh, that would burn it out and it would also short out the output signal so you'd get a double whammo not only would you blow the transistor out but even if whatever you did get out of it would be shorted out anyway so you need that resistor you could conceivably put a resistor down below the transformer here uh, right in this area here and and but you'd still want this resistor to keep the uh, output from getting shorted out this the resistance of this resistor should match whatever the input impedance is for this uh, circuit and these blocking capacitor well this blocking capacitor in particular will have to have a large value because uh, otherwise it could smooth out the audio frequency variations in the radio frequency signal but they don't have to be terribly large these are RF signals radio frequency signals here this is the audio signal right here so it's a variable gain class a radio frequency amplifier and as long as you don't try to vary the gain too much so as to drive the transistor into the non-linear portion of the characteristic curve you'll get a clean am output signal if you drive this thing too hard if the audio frequency or the audio signal is too strong then the variations in the gain will drive this transistor part way into the nonlinear portion of the characteristic curve. They call that, not surprisingly, nonlinearity. And the result of nonlinearity in an amplitude modulated amplifier is, you guessed it again, distortion. And you don't really want that although some you're not going to hear very many am signals on the ham radio bands but you'll hear plenty of them on the old-fashioned am broadcast band and uh, you don't want to hear distorted tchaikovsky's fifth symphony nothing is worse than tchaikovsky's fifth symphony with audio frequency distortion trust me on this one okay stan jubilisco signing off until next time, so long.